Okay, so let's take a peek. You know what? Let's just do a little hardware check. Miss Chloe, good morning, or now good afternoon. Eh, it's daylight savings time still. The sun is not where it needs to be yet. Chloe, ring in. What do you say is our answer here? C. C as in Charlie? Uh, D as in dog. Thank you. And again, guys, you know, I'm not known for my German Shepherd hearing. So D is in dog. Matthew? Agree or disagree with D, Delta, or dog? Matthew, thumbs up. You can agree. Read. Again? I agree. All right. Alyssa? I agree. Alyssa, thumbs up. Thank you. Ahmed? Yes, you agree? No. Okay. Well, dramatic drum roll here, and D is in dog. Good. Um, Alyssa, why isn't C as in Charlie? A good answer here. Alyssa, ring in now. Now you'll have to unmute. Um, it's not as good of an answer because more of the energy is getting put into heat and then uh, kinetic because it's also walking at a constant speed. Right. There you go. The key was constant speed. So at, do you have kinetic? Yes. And in the very beginning of the situation, when you first go from rest up to walking, Yes, you increase your kinetic, but then once you hit normal, constant walking speed, you're no longer increasing your kinetic. The, your lunch, your breakfast that you're burning, chemical energy is going into thermal only to keep the process going. We're not seeing a gain in height, so A is out. We're not seeing a gain in speed, so C, Charlie, is out. Good deal. All right, awesome. All right, what in the world is this? I don't know. Oh, that's definitely not good here. All right, let's see why this is happening here. Uh, why are we not seeing this slide in its all its glory here? Wow, my uh, transitions are coming in in the wrong time here. All right. Well, unfortunately, I have to work on this. Let me do. Let me get five seconds here, and work on this. And unfortunately, you guys can see what's going on. I didn't pretest it. My apologies. All right. So now let's present again. Still having issues. Okay, Billy and Millie are twins. We'll go with it. I'll fix it later. Billy walks five kilometers in one hour. Millie runs the five kilometers in one half hour. A, which twin used more energy? This is a little interesting. Uh, is there anyone? I can see the gallery. You're on a second screen all at one shot. Just wave your hand if it's true. Anyone know Lily Alconin? Anyone know Lily? She's a little, little older than you guys. Yeah. Lily was a cross-country runner in addition to a very talented voice. Uh, she was cross-country, and this would drive her crazy. She refused to accept this fact, but there's a couple of math heavies in the room right now with Anish and Ahmed, and I think their math gives them consolation, and they can accept the answer coming up. Just question A. Which twin uses more energy? Faith, what what do you think? Faith, please, would you ring in? Millie. Millie the runner, right? Rather than the walker. Okay, Alyssa, what do you think? Up, up. The same, Millie. Millie, you agree. She uses more energy. Anish? What do you say? I think they use the same energy. Touchdown. Good for you. Anish, bring in and explain. Because they both travel the same distance, so the, the work is similar. And the units are joules here, which is the units for work. Right. So they must be equivalent. Good, good man. And now in your book, let's see if I can do this. In your book, it says that the energy you use is proportional to your speed. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, what, what am I missing here? Then Millie clearly has 
twice the speed, but for half the time, right? So if she, you're using the energy, if you're consuming at twice the rate, two times, but only one half the time, your total is two over one times one over two. It's the same. Now, everybody probably feels good about their intended answer to B. So they're the same energy. Uh, you really step on the gas and your car is moving at 60 miles per hour and consuming, I'm going to give up, make a number up, um, two cups of fuel, two cups of gasoline. Uh, your grandma is driving by at half the speed and at her rate, she's consuming one cup of speed, but she'll have to drive for twice as long, two total cups of, of fuel consumed. Does that make any sense? When you run, you're at a higher rate for a lesser time, okay? All right, Faith, back in the ball game here. B, which twin generated more power? Work done per unit time. Faith, which was more powerful? Millie. Absolutely. Millie is more powerful in that the work done was the same. And if you remember, if you guys can see me, Thumbs up if you can see me and my calculator. Just give me a thumbs up. Danny can't. Yeah, beautiful. Okay. I used to do for you last year, I lifted a one kilogram mass, one meter. So MGH was one kilogram times 10 for gravity times one meter was 10 joules. And then I went, zoom, still 10 joules of work done. However, 10 joules divided by one Mississippi is 10 watts of power. Uh, power, is, 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 uh, power is, you know, right, work divided by time. So, but 10 joules divided by 0.5 seconds was 20 watts of power, okay? When you do a job faster, you're using more power. A 100 watt light bulb chews up power twice as fast as a 50 watt bulb. But there's our jogger again, a 100 watt bulb on for one hour, same cost, same thing as a 50 watt bulb on for two hours, same energy consumption. Make sense? 50 watts for two hours or 100 watts for one hour, same deal. Okay. All right, Alyssa, please don't pass out from being bored here, okay? Okay, now, uh, in the system we're going to learn now, the energy triangle is a little different than before. We had kinetic and potential, but we had work done here. Well, now in the energy triangle, we've got kinetic, potential, and chemical energy, and we have two escape outs, thermal energy out and work. All right, now look here, guys. Let's just relax. Energy is transferred to or from the system as work or heat. Actually, work can be outputted. You can do work in. Heat can be outputted. You can pump heat in. There are two, two outs here. Heat or thermal energy and work done. And they can go be out, taken out of the system. You can take heat out. You can have the system do work. It's less energy, or you can do work on the system or pump heat in, okay? Real simple examples, Danny. You and I are going to talk for a minute here. Danny, um, I'm going to do work on a system. You just have to say true or false. You don't even have to, un you don't even have to uh, mute, unmute, Danny. True or false. Danny, I take a rubber band, and I do work on it, and I claim now the rubber band has more energy. I did work on the system and it now has more energy. True or false? True. Okay, now I take the rubber band and I knock over a Dixie cup and I claim the system did work, output of work, and now the rubber band has less energy. Anna, true or false? 
We let the rubber band do something useful, like knock over a Dixie cup. The rubber band did work and now has less energy. Anna true, Anna false. True story. Okay. Heat can go in or out. Okay. It's in the winter time. So you put, I don't know, these oven, these special gloves or gel packs in, you put them in the microwave and you and then you put them in your, you pump heat in so that the gel pack in your glove or shoes has greater thermal energy content. Do we agree? Now, during the soccer game, during the football game, during marching band, whatever, as you're wearing these things, heat is escaping out into the environment. And at the end of the day, your feet are cold. Those gel packs have less energy. So work can go in, raising energy. Heat can go in, raising energy of the system. Work can go out, heat can flow out, lowering the energy. And that's what this chapter is all about. All right, now this is some interesting stuff here. This is from your book, and these are nice, interesting, um, nice, interesting pairs of relationships here. For example, for example, this picture over here is a solar light in a flower bed taken in the daytime, and then this is the same picture taken at nighttime. Matthew, what do we got going here? Energy transformations. What is turning to what in this upper picture? You're going to have to ring in. Yeah. Um, Just uh, in, go ahead. Uh, the sun is transferring to light. Ooh, sun transferring to light. No, stay in the upper left picture, Matthew. What is transferred to what here? I'll help um, you out. Sunlight is turned into blank in the solar cell uh power in a way yeah give me an energy form uh chemical energy okay good in the battery or electric charge if it's a capacitor fine it's a battery on these things so sunlight light energy transferred here into chemical energy all right now it's later on at night Ahmed Ring in, please. What's happening here? Chemicals to electric. Chemical energy to electric, and then even to light energy, if you wish. Right. All right. So that chemical energy goes to electric, lights the bulb, light energy out. Good. Okay. Uh, Alice, this is 12 o'clock noon on a sunny day. These are soybeans. What, what's happening here, Alice? energy transfer wise so light energy is um taken in by the plant to create chemical energy in the uh, plant beautiful light energy goes in create and converted to chemical energy in the plant marcus what's happening over here and the pictures are related marcus what's happening there chemical energy is being released as heat and and light both and light. yes yes Yes, heat and light. Now, we use the candle for the light, and if we get too near it, ouch, we realize it also has a very dominant heat component. Uh, Faith and Austin. Faith, the top one. Austin, the bottom one. These are related. Faith, what is being converted to what here, Faith? You know what you're looking at? Yes or no? If you don't know, I'll explain it. Okay, Faith, what energy is being converted into what energy? And it might not be a simple one step. If you give me one of the two steps, I'll help you out. It's, your, yeah. it's turning into chemical. What is turning into? I miss Or electric. Electrical. I missed your first energy form. What is being turned into electrical? I don't know. What moves those blades? You do know. The wind. Right. The wind in motion, Faith, you're still on. You're doing great. The wind in motion, Mr. G, has blank energy. Ask any poor victim Kinetic. of a, any victim of a hurricane right now in Louisiana. 
the wind has kinetic energy, one half mv squared. So when the speed of a hurricane doubles a niche, show me with your hands how many times more powerful the wind is. You betcha. When the speed of the wind doubles, it's four times more powerful. The speed of the wind from 30 miles per hour triples to 90. It's nine times more powerful. Good. Okay, so Austin in Faith's diagram, moving kinetic energy of the moving wind was turned into electricity. In your diagram, what do we got, kiddo? Well, the speed of the energy of electricity is being transferred into kinetic energy to turn the blades of the fan. And move the wind across your face on a hot summer day. Well done, young man. Okay, these are highly related. As you can see, energy goes this way. I'm not trying to be funny here. Energy goes forward and backwards on the transformations. Uh, Alyssa, with 100% efficiency, or no, Mr. G, substantial losses? Substantial losses. Absolutely. No system is perfectly efficient at the conversion. Uh, but even something operating, you'll be stunned in our chapter when we get to the efficiency of your teen, your young driving teenagers now. You'll be stunned at the inefficiency of your car. The main product when you burn gasoline in your engine, Austin, ring in, is what? The main product is what when your car burns gasoline? Um, okay, as in, um, we, want, we wanted to, you missed yesterday. We want to stay with this word right here now. We want to stay okay. with the word energy for the rest of the year. Energies are the last year was forces, this, this year is energy. All right, so the heat energy. You better believe it. You, and you think you have heat coming out of the back muffler? That's nothing compared to under the engine off of the highway and just spilling out of your car. The efficiency of an automobile is woefully low. The bulk of the energy, 80, 90 percent, goes into heat, and it's just lost to heating up the atmosphere. Okay, energy of the body considered as a system. Once food is eaten, and here is a delicious cheeseburger, once the heat is, once, excuse me, distracted by telemarketers, um, once this delicious cheeseburger is eaten, the uh, student can do two things. Do some amount of useful work and shed heat to the atmosphere. Now, this, if you did your reading, your book talked about a percentage of the human body. Who knows what percent this is and what percent that is. The, the, your reading talk, all right, Miss Park. Ring in, please, Chloe. Uh, so it's 25% for work and 75% for heat. Perfect. We're going to assume, flat line, the human body. Matthew, is, are we boring you? Okay, Matt. Still love you. All right. Um, the human body, your reading said, is 25% efficient. Well done, Miss Park. So if you uh, have 100 joules of energy available from your food, we're going to figure you can do 25 joules of work, and 75 joules are just gone to the surroundings. Okay, Alyss, are you yawning? No? Okay. Okay. All right, 25% efficient. And the energy content of food is usually given in the food calorie or the nutritional calorie with the capital C. That is not the calorie you used last year with Mr. Stewart in AP Chem. You used the lowercase calorie. One food calorie with a capital C or a nutrition calorie is equal to 1,000 chemistry calories or 4,190 joules in standard physics. Okay? So when they say a candy bar, is listed as 230 calories with the capital C. I apologize for the distraction at the bottom. It, it's a flaw in the system here with Google Slides. Um, if a candy bar is rated at 230 nutrition calories, food calories, it's 230,000 
physics calories, or 230 kilocalories, or 964 kilojoules of thermal energy. You would multiply that value by Chloe's 0.25, and that's the amount of work you can do because you ate a candy bar. Are we clear on that? You would multiply the output of the candy bar in physics units times 0.25, and that is the lowly amount of work you can do, and the rest of that energy went into heating up the room you were in. We've all been in rooms with a lot of people, and if the air conditioning hasn't been great, gee, it seems like it's getting warmer in here. Yeah. All right, now who can impress me other than Chloe? Your book uh, mentioned the standing rate, the sitting rate right now of all of us per person in watts. What is your rest rate, your metabolic rate in, all right, Anna, good girl. Anna, please. 100 watts. Excellent. All right, now I'm going to tell you an engineering story, and you can say true or false. Don't let the old man with the gray hair give you a, a snow job here today. The casinos in Atlantic City have to, by building code, have heaters in them. December, January, February, it snows in New Jersey. Prior to COVID, you have to think of casinos as packed with wall-to-wall -wall people. Statement, subject to true or false, the casinos have never once turned on the heaters in January prior to COVID in January. True, and they, uh, furthermore, they run the air conditioning. What's on the casino floor? People packed wall to wall and machines turning. A niche, true or false? Am I, or am I giving you a snow job here? You true. Can, true or false. Uh, guys, all vote, true or false. They, they never turn on the heat, although they're required. You're darn right. They have to cool those rooms down. You got 100 watts per person, and if you're walking, your metabolic rate is higher than 100 watts. And you've got machines cranking, making noise, moving parts, and it just heats the place up. They run their air 12 months. Now, of course, thermodynamics, you don't have to run it as much in January as in July, but they run their air 12 months. All right, a 12 ounce can of soda, approximately. Oh, guys, how many? Just raise your hand. How many have their book with them on Cyber Wednesday? All right, couple. All right, from now on, that's okay. It should be at home. Stay at home. Have your book for Cyber Wednesday because there are charts you might need, okay? All right, a 12-ounce can of soda contains approximately 40 grams of sugar, a simple carbohydrate. What is the chemical energy in joules? All right, first of all, we're getting near the bottom of the hour. I understand that. Uh, does anybody, can anybody tell us, those students that have a book, from the chart, easy girl, from the chart on page, la, 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 322, 322, what sugar is considered a simple carbohydrate? What do we get per gram of simple carbohydrate? If you can ring in, I'd appreciate it. Anybody? 17. Good, 17. man. 17 grams. Whoop. Let me check my units. 17 kilojoules per gram, right? So we're going to multiply 17 kilojoules times 40. And that would be. There's our 17 kilojoules times 40 grams. And this is the energy available from my particular favorite, Coca-Cola straight up classic, regular high test. No diet this, no caffeine free, none of that silliness. Straight up Coca-Cola is the best. Um, Marcus, thumbs up or thumbs down. Can we do that much work from drinking that soda? Yes, yes no. Yes. Anish, yes, no. Anish says no. Danny, oh, yes. Oh, just drinking it. Okay. After we drink that soda, can we do that much work? Can anybody defend their no answer and use another number? Bring in. 
Go ahead, Anish. They only do uh, one fourth of the work that. Uh, right. And you, this is where Marcus, you would assume your body is 25% efficient at turning your fuel consumption into useful work done output. So 25% of that number is work we could do because you drank that soda. We okay on that, guys? Yeah, give me a thumbs up if you're okay. Excellent. All right, bottom of the hour. Adios. Good to see everybody's face without a mask on. Nice to see you guys. Miss you much. All right, adios, guys.